Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch, and on this week's show, I bring you to Canoundra in New South Wales to check out an eclectic collection in a guy's yard that's well worth a look. In this week's Classic Restos, on the road. Well, here we are in Canoundra, New South Wales. The historic town centre is a step back in time, almost like a movie set. You could only imagine what it would have been like over 100 years ago with its dirt road laced with horse and cart travel, the Victorian-style dresses worn by the ladies and the suits and boots worn by the men with the pocket watches chained to the waistcoats. The settlement started here in 1844 and like most of these country towns, it's well worth a look when you can. They all appreciate your business, but now it's time for Roy. This is where he lives. This is his water tank. This is the bus he drives. This is a part of his yard. This is a railway carriage on the way to his front door. This is the front door. Doors, doors, lots of doors, lo lots of doors. Well, when you come to Roy's place, you, you don't see his house, you, you see his doors. And this is Roy. Now, before I show you more of Roy, his place is hard to describe. It's almost like this kaleidoscope of Nothing specific to show you, but more a cross-section across a huge genre of different things. From tools to trucks, tractors, plenty of tractors, and stuff that Roy himself has created from one area, and that area is right here. He's a very clever guy. All you have to do is go through a series of doors to find him, but once you do, He's well worth a chat. How are you, Roy? Yeah, good, Fletch, mate. That's good. How long have you lived here? Since 1970. Well, it's a beautiful place, Roy. Yeah, all good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The way you're set up here, so many doors, so many shipping containers. There's a surprise behind every door. I love that. Never go bored when you come to Roy's place. Now, the first door went up here on this container. We've got the old Holden. What's the story here on this one? Well, it was made in 59 and was sold in Canoundra on the 2nd of December, 59, in the Holden dealership here. Yeah. A little modification I notice on the back. You've got a, a 186 and a, a five-speed yeah. box in there. Yeah, it's got a 186 Celica five-speed disc brake front end, and it was engineered at the time, so and first registered in February, 84. Beautiful box, that five-speed Celica box and that overdrive. You, you really you can't beat the overdrives. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. The RPM just drops way down on the freeway. It's exactly what you want. Yeah, you can get 36 mile of the gallon out of it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, no, all good, yeah. And so this hole in here, what does it mean to you, Roy? Oh, it's been around since Adam. That's what a long term, I suppose, yeah. yeah. You might end up in a museum one day or something, so. <laughs> really? I don't know. I don't want to sell yourself too short, Roy, but there's probably a few things here that could end up in the museum. What do you say? Oh, yeah, well, you never know, do you? You tell me. <laughs> Depends how much money they got to spend. <laughs> I know it's early in the episode, but you are a Holden legend, and because of that, please take this cap from Holden, Holden Legends cap. There you go, Roy. That's what that's what you get. That's what you deserve for being a Holden legend. Yeah, much appreciated, mate. Well, you know what I've got to do with it, haven't you? All good. Thank you very, very much. Thank Holden too. Yeah, much appreciated. Good on you, mate. Yeah. When I was a kid, I loved cars. Still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brown was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Have a look for your nearest Holden Certified Service Centre at holden.com.au and let's keep supporting Australia's own. Right up. next one. And wedged in between the clothesline and shed 14, we have this. A 1984 Rodeo. I never thought the day would come where I'd actually do an interview with somebody that's restored one of these Rodeos. Yeah, Mickey Mouse, mate. I got it 12 months ago. It took me 12 months to do what you see behind you. Yeah. Yeah. There's another reason why I'm taking this vehicle here under my wing a little bit. It's a steel bumper car. It's also my very first company car that I had before I left that company and then went to a, a manufacturing company where then we, you know, we got our, our Falcons, our brand new XF Falcons at the time. I had a Rodeo Space Cab, five-speed manual, gauges down in the console, just like this vehicle here. My cab was a bit longer though. The, the, the cab came to about here and there was a glass section there, had Space Cab, and they're so rare. I, I don't believe I've seen one over the years, but all I can say is in 1985, when I had that Rodeo, it was a cracker. And I, I seriously mean that. It was such a good vehicle. The same steel wheels, the five-speed, the two-litre engine, bulletproof little unit, and it went so well. It had cloth trim, had the same uh, door cards as what your, yours has got here. So this, to me, I've stepped back in time a little bit, and also a sports dash with a taco. Now, you've got to admit, truck on the compliance plate for a little commercial vehicle for the mid-'80s, this is a pretty cool little unit. Well, when I want to sell it, you know who wants to buy it, don't you? Oh, no, no, no. I've got no room. <laughs> but it is a great thing. And I've come all these years and I've finally found somebody that's actually restored one. Yeah, Mickey Mouse, mate. All good. Mm. Yeah, much no, appreciated. They're a great vehicle. And uh, credit to you. Uh, now, the extent you went with this, uh, full sandblast, right? Sandblast, bare chassis rebuild from yeah. the ground up. Yeah. If you're going to do a full resto, that's really the only way to do them properly, I well, believe. you rusted in the chassis, and that's where you've got to start. So. so what made you want to get this little Holden from the mid-'80s and, and invest so much into it to restore it? Well, it was a mate of mine that bought it to use, and he had it in the shed and unfortunately got crook and died. And it sat in the shed for 10 years, and I knew where it was, and I went and inquired and got it, and that's, that's the end result. Because of the same year, we, were, we had a we had a VK Commodore out on the road, didn't we? That's right. Yeah, you know, all good. But anyway, there it is. Good on you. Good on you. Well, that's uh, and all these projects here. This uh, y y you'd never be bored here. Your, your workshop over there, I assume that's where 
all the work takes place. And there's such a diverse range of stuff here that you've restored, you've worked on, bizarre stuff, stuff from overseas that could be like the only thing here in the country when it comes to like agricultural equipment. Yeah, that's right. You know, just to, just be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll see a bit more of that. Uh, okay, time to go and open another door, Roy. Righto. Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Righto. I'm getting door anxiety. <laughs> and into the next shipping container. Nice Merc here, Roy. Yeah, 1970 Mercedes-Benz 280S. Story on this one? It was bought new in Germany. And a bloke used it for two years and then brought it out here and he sold it and the family had it up until we got it about oh, seven or eight years ago. My wife bought it. So it's to virtually totally original as it was, yeah, all good. It's a straight unit, isn't it? It is Mickey Mouse, yeah, 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 yeah. really good, yeah. I think it's pretty cool that the uh, you mentioned also that some of the servicing was written in German. Yeah, it was serviced over in Germany. The first two services are wrote in German in the book, so, yeah. <laughs> Well, the first track is a Massey 744D with a P6 Perkins, come out around the late 50s, early in the early late 40s, early 50s, and it was a local tractor bought in Cowra, and I got it 20 years ago, and this is what I've done to it. The tractor in the middle is a uh, Farmall 200, which was imported by Gordon Edgell early in about 54 for market gardens at Cowra and so forth, and uh, I scored it a few years ago. And that's how it is. The big tractor down the end uh, is an international 44K, which come to Cowra by train in 36, and spent a Sabbath, went on a farm down the river, and has done between 35 and 40,000 hours. And the bloke that I got it off said it's worn out five sets of back tyres. It's had three rebuilds, and I scored it about 15 years ago and restored it. Yeah, well, this is, this is it. There's three tractors in this container, but there's a few more to go, and they're all in this similar sort of condition. Ready to rock and roll. There's the next one. Inside container 114. How you doing, Roy? Good, good, all good. You having, having fun? Yeah, mate, yeah, as long as you're having fun. Absolutely. That's good, then. Tell us about this Fordson. Uh, it's a 1964... Fordson Super Dexter that came to Canoundra by train, it would have, and it sat in the showroom down here until it was sold to a farm and stayed there for about 45 years until I got it and done what I've done with it. That's a good looking tractor, isn't it? Yeah, they were a stylish bit of gear, actually. Yeah. yeah. Back in the time, how many would have been sold, do you reckon, Roy? Oh, look, thousands of them, I suppose. They've got a three cylinder Perkins in them. They're a very popular little tractor. So condition-wise, when you got it, what, what was she like? Well, it was on the farm where it sat for years and there was a bloke renting a the house there and for rent he was going to do the tractor up and he pulled it into a thousand pieces and that's where it stayed and I think it thought its life was over till I managed to find it and bring it home in the trailer and put it back together. All right, Roy, just tell us about, tell us about this shunter, this shunter one here. Well, it's based on an E27N Forts and it was manufactured by a mob called Chayside in England and they got the tractor and then modified it to suit with a diff lock and changed the wheels and so forth and made it up. And it probably went to Western Rail in England and specifically designed to shunt rail carriages around a uh, goods yard or whatever. Then it came to Sydney, don't know when, and worked around Sydney somewhere probably doing the same job. And then it came here to a produce place to uh, shunt rail carriages from the siding up to the mill and back. I found it in 2015 and restored it, and this is the finished article. Yeah. Gee, Roy, this is pretty cool. 1937 Caterpillar, fully restored. Yeah, all good. Come home in pieces on the back of the truck, and this is the end result, so all good. Anyone that's mechanically minded would appreciate this. Your attention to detail, the, the, the way you go about things, this is heavy-duty stuff too. A lot of this stuff isn't light either. Well, like my best mates out there in the other shed, the forklift, I couldn't live without it. It just does everything. It does. I just, 
things that I got attachments for it, and it just does everything. So yeah, you got Mr. Fork out there to give you a hand, and yeah, Mr. Fork can help you do a lot of things, and it really shows here. I love uh, how you do this restoration work. It's quite a few tractors that we've seen so far today, and uh, how many do you churn out a year, roughly? Oh, it's two sometimes, one and a half, two. Depends on how much work you got to do it. I got a John Deere there that I spent a bit over twelve months on, and it's had open heart surgery, but it's going now. You know. So what do you do in your spare time, Roy? You play with them. <laughs> Isn't that good? That is that is fantastic. Now, um, in terms of finding them, oh, I guess they find you. A bit of both. Yeah, you always see, see some advertised and word of mouth. This come from knowing someone else that had one and just talk about it. this. That, this was in an orchard in Orange for most of the flight. The engine, tell us there, the size, horsepower, what can you tell us about that? about that, but I did have to rebuild it. I put a new set of rings and so forth in it and fixed it up because it was a bit tired. Well, for a bloke that doesn't know much about the engine, he's rebuilt it and put new rings in it. He's done pretty well. It's all good, all good. Yeah. Part of the passion. Updraft carburetor. Yeah, updraft carby. That's what they all had back in them days. <laughs> Overhead valve, that's something. Yeah. yeah, no, all good. Now, from the era, being an updraft carby, what does it run best on? Well, they were designed to run on kerosene because of the economics and the price of petrol, but and you start them on petrol, run them for five minutes and then turn them over to caro. But in this situation, if you only take them to a show or something, well, I do bother nothing but petrol because that's all you're doing with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't buy the caro anyway, so it's yeah. non-existent. Love it, Roy. Love it. Yeah. It's one thing about these things. You'll, you'll never get a ticket for speeding. No, that's exactly right. Yeah, walking speed. <laughs> Slow and easy wins the race, like a snail, keep going, see. Yeah. It's the level of your expertise, though. Uh, it's not, well, I believe it, I think it's beyond a lot of people. Not just every guy can restore a tractor. There's, uh, it's a different level of craftsmanship. Oh, well, it's just your passion of what you do, I suppose. Yeah, uh, I yeah, yeah. You know. yeah, I guess, you know, guys restore boats, they, they do trucks, they do cars, they do bikes. It's... Uh, it's just where, where your passion's at. It tickles your fancy. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you own a classic, or perhaps some tools and memorabilia. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And the Shannon's Club is always there for you as well. With their own in-house productions such as Shannon's Club TV, Legends of Motorsport, Driven, End of an Era. You can catch classic restos there as well along with a host of other really cool stuff as Australia's largest automotive online hub. For more information visit shannons.com.au it's a third month 79 Dodge D5N uh, come out with factory GM in it 10 speed Road Ranger and it's got flared guards Bostrom seats, flared tanks and that was all totally original it started out its life in Dubbo a bloke bought it and was doing TNT and then he had the option to upgrade and was to go up and cart cotton and he needed something bigger so he virtually put this on the market and bought a ACO 3070. Two brothers came up from Bungendore, which is near Canberra, and bought this, paid it out, took it back, and it had a 32-foot trailer behind it. And they basically used it as a farm truck and carted stock and stuff around down there. It's been up here twice to Canoundra to get hay during the drought in the 80s. And then in 95, they sent it to Goulburn and got it, what you see there, done, stretched out, 24 foot tray, all Ryko Lazier, they done all that and it's been fully engineered and everything to 14 and a half tonne and that was all done in 95 and then I found it in 2009 is when I found it and jousted it up a bit and we took it to Alice Springs to the truck show in 2010 
Otherwise, it just goes to rallies and shows and so forth, and that's all it does. The last thing it went to, which it was in March of this year, it went to the uh, big show at Trangy, which was oh, the thousands of people there. And another thing I forgot to, to mention, with these 653s, it's fairly rare, and this one's got jake brakes, and there's not many of them have got jakes. That's, that is a, anyone that knows what that means, it's upmarket sort of thing. Yeah, so, no, it performs good on the road and goes good, yeah. See, it's good in that sense, and it cruises at about a bit over 90, 95 k's an hour quite comfortably. 2,600 revs, all good. The 10-speed Road Ranger is quite a good box. You've got a high and low, and it's good in all ratios. It, it's really well patterned and well put together, sort of Mickey Mouse. There's about 500 revs in each gear, all the way up through. Yeah, no, it's good, yeah. Pleasure to drive. It's, it's comfortable, it's, there's all, everything good about it. It's, uh, it's a little rough if you put a load on it, but that's, every truck's the same. No, it performs on the road good, gets a lot of a, you know, attention, everyone looks at it. No, all good. Well, it is the last of the model because they ceased making them particular ones in 79. This is third month 79 and I don't know, but it was somewhere around that 79 when they finished making them. So I suppose that in its favour of being the classic and the older it gets now, the more prominent that's going to become as time goes by, you know, to find them like this. Yeah, so all good. If you go back to the early fact of Dodgers, they were side valves and then they graduated up into V8s and that went on for a while and then Perkins came in on the scene with the early ones. Most of the diesels were Perkins and then I think these D5Ns were the first ones that went into the, into the Detroit and they did have a 185 Cummins in them too, so that's about where it all started to finish sort of thing, so yeah. I mean, GMs have got their, got their own mark, and unfortunately today you hardly ever hear them going up and down the road, they're sort of dying out. But anyone that hears one or knows anything about them, has, they've got a sound all their own and always will have. Yeah, no, real good. Yeah, well, it's also got a radio and a stereo, but it's nearly useless unless you're pulled up because you can't hear it for the noise, you know, the hum of them all, you know. In fact, you don't want to listen to the radio, you want to listen to the engine. All good. Well, gee, Roy, we've had some weather close us in. Lovely, isn't it, eh? Rain, rain and more rain. Yeah. It might clear directly. If we, yeah. well, you, don't, uh, you don't want to take your vehicles out in the rain, and I can understand that there. You've got a chamois? <laughs> I haven't got a chamois big enough. <laughs> uh, Roy, just want to thank you for your, for your time yeah. and uh, for a chance to, to come here to feature just some of what you've got. Uh, it's a toe in the water. There's a lot more here, as you could probably work out. Uh, with all the doors to the shipping containers and the roller doors and goodness knows what, um, it's just surprise after surprise here, Roy. Exactly. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, thanks again, mate. No worries. All right. Thanks, Thank buddy. you. All good. All right. We'll catch, we'll catch up down the track. We'll do yep. a bit more with you, huh? It sounds good, mate. Right yeah. Thanks, Roy. All righty. All good. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos featuring the collection of Roy White. And that was just some of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.